this is Jennifer with A Crocheted Simplicity. In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to crochet my done-in-one beanie. If you're anything like me and you love the look of knitting, but you can't knit a stitch to save your soul, then you're going to love this Knit Look Crochet Project. For this hat, I used the Knit Look Crochet Garter Stitch for the main part of the hat. Let's look at the solid color yarn. I used the Knit Look Rib Stitch for the band. And then I used my favorite short row technique to get a nicely fitted crown. I chose a super bulky yarn. I chose Lion Brand Woolly as Thick and Quick. And then I also used Lion Brand Hometown USA for one of my samples shown. I chose a super bulky yarn for a couple different reasons. The first reason is I wanted a nice warm hat for the bitter cold temperatures that we get here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The second reason is I wanted a super quick hat project. And the third reason is because it had the perfect amount of yardage per ball to make this a one skein project. So for this hat, you're going to need one ball of a super bulky yarn, right around 100 yards. I used a 9mm crochet hook. You're going to need whatever size hook you need to meet gauge. A handful of stitch markers. They'll make it easier when we work the short rows. A pair of scissors and a yarn needle. Go ahead and gather your materials and I'll meet you back here and we'll start our hat. You may be used to working hats from the top down or the bottom up, but because this hat uses short rows, it's going to be worked sideways. We're going to start at the crown and work to the band and then back and forth, and each row is going to get a little shorter until we create a pie-shaped section, and then we're going to tie it all together. Then we'll work and create the next section, and so on and so forth. And then finally, we'll add a seam, which is almost invisible once you get your hat on. Before you begin any knit look crochet project, it's a good idea to pull several yards of yarn from your ball or your skein and leave it lay loosely on the table or on your lap. This will help you control your tension. When working knit look crochet stitches, you want to make sure your tension is nice and loose. Otherwise, it's hard to get your hooks into your stitches when you work the following rows. Now on camera, I'm going to be making the baby size. This pattern includes, includes six different sizes, but it's easy to customize if you need to. So if you're going to follow along with me, I'm going to begin, like I said, working the baby size with my 9mm hook in my yarn. I'm going to begin with a slip knot on my hook. And then for row one, I chain 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now I prefer to work into the back hump of the chain. To find the back hump, tip your chain on the side and the back humps form these little ridges. And that's where I like to work into. And this is what you need to work into to make your seam look nearly invisible. So make sure to tip your foundation chain on the side and look for these little humps. So we're going to begin by working into the second chain from our hook. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. We're going to slip stitch into that second chain. So insert your hook from front to back. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop all the way through the loop on your hook to make a slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch in each remaining chain across. Working into that back hump. So when you finish row one, for the baby size, you'll have 19 stitches. 
Now when you're working slip stitches, another tip I can give you is to keep your tension loose. I don't hold on to or grasp the yarn with my non-hook hand. I just let it float through my fingers. You want as little tension on this part as possible. So that's why I pull it right from the ball, because if I'm working from the ball, I pull it from the ball and let it lay loose. If I pull it right from the ball, it'll create tension on this working yarn. It'll tighten up the hook, the loop on your hook, and then it'll make your stitches tight. So if you find that you're working a little too tightly and you're not holding the yarn, another tip is you can take the your hook and pull up slightly to increase the size of the loop on your hook before you work that next stitch. Not a lot. Don't over exaggerate, but just a little. You want that that hook or that loop on your hook a little loose. Now there's row one. You should have 19 stitches. Now, sometimes it's hard. People say they can't find the front loop or the back loop of a stitch after you turn. When you're looking at the top of your stitches, the loop that's closest to you is your front loop, and the loop that's furthest from you is your back loop. But when you turn them, then your back loop becomes your front loop and your front loop becomes your back loop. So sometimes it can get confusing. So for the next row, we need to work into the back loop only of that first stitch. So a tip, to make it easier for you, is to place a stitch marker in the front loop only of the last stitch you worked of the row. Then chain one and turn. Now when we turn, we can see where we have to work into. This is the back loop only of that first stitch. The other thing I like to do if you're just starting out with short rows is before you turn place a stitch marker I'm going to use a different color place a stitch marker in the front loop only of that very first slip stitch you created. This I'll go over this later and tell you why it's important once we get there. So now to begin row two, we're going to slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch across to the last stitch. Now remember, keep your sti slip stitches loose. And as you're working, a good way to judge the size of your slip stitches is that when you're making these new stitches make sure that they are at least the same size or a smidge bigger than the stitches you're working into. If they're smaller then your stitches are going to be way too tight. So row two, we back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across to the last stitch. Here's our last stitch, and then we're going to skip that last stitch. That's our first short row. And we're going to chain one and turn. Now for row three, we're working into the front loop only of some of the stitches. So tip your work towards you. The loop here is closest to me, that's my front loop. This right here isn't a stitch, that's my turning chain. Here's my first stitch. So to work into the front loop only, you're going to insert your hook from front to back into that front loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it right through the loop on your hook. And row three says to slip stitch in the next 15. So we have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And then it says to back loop only slip stitch in each of the last three. So turn your work toward you. This loop right here is your back loop. Here's your front loop, there's your back loop. Front loop, back loop. So work a slip stitch in each of the last three back loops. Again, if you have trouble seeing that first stitch after you turn, put a stitch marker around the front loop of the last stitch, chain one, and turn. Now we're going to begin row four. Here's the back loop of our first stitch. And we're going to do the same as we did for row two. We're going to back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across to the last stitch. And we're going to again skip the last stitch. So for row four, you should have worked 17 slip stitches. So here's the last stitch of our row, and I'm going to place a stitch marker in the back loop only of that last stitch, and I'm going to lock it. Now I'm doing this because I'm just showing you how to work short rows. It comes in handy when we have to work the last row of a section. Okay, so chain one and turn to begin row five. And now for row five, we're gonna work into the front loop only for the next 14 stitches. And you can kinda see that garter stitch is popping out. A couple more rows and it'll be easy to see. So insert your hook into the front loop of the first stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it right through the loop on your hook. We need a total of 14 slip stitches in the front loop only. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And then we finish the row with a back loop only slip stitch in each of the last three. One, two, three. Again, put a stitch marker in that front loop of the first stitch, chain one and turn, and then for row six, back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across to the last stitch. One, two, three, four. So we'll have 16 stitches total for row six. Back loop only slip stitch across to that last stitch and skip the last stitch. Place a locking stitch marker in the back loop only. It's going to help us again at the end of the short row section. Chain one and turn. Now for row seven, we work a front loop only slip stitch in the next 13. This is our turning chain, so we don't work into that one. Here's our first stitch. Work a slip stitch in the front loop only of the first 13 stitches. And then we finish the row with a slip stitch in the back loop only of the last three stitches. Now 
And we're going to place a stitch marker here. Now you can see that garter stitch popping out even better. I'm going to pull a little bit more yarn from my ball. And now we are on row 8. So chain 1 and turn. And work a back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across to the last stitch. And we skip that last stitch. So for row 8 we're going to have 15 stitches total. And here's that last stitch. We're going to skip that last stitch then place another locking stitch marker into the back loop only of the last stitch. Chain one and turn to work row nine. Row nine says a front loop only slip stitch and each of the next 12 stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, and finish row 9 with a back loop only slip stitch in each of the last three. 1, 2, and 3. Now you can see our short rows. I'm going to zoom out for just a second. Oops. Each couple rows gets a little shorter. It's like stair steps. So now for row 10, we're going to work back across and then we're going to work into these stitches that we marked with stitch markers to complete a pie shaped section. So place our stitch marker in the front loop only of that last stitch. I'm going to chain one and turn. And zoom in just a little. And now for row 10, we're going to work a back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across and each unworked stitch that we didn't work into from the previous rows all the way to row 1. This was that first one we placed. So back loop only slip stitch across the previous row that we just worked. Okay, so that's working across the previous row. And now we need to slip stitch in the back loop only of each unworked stitch. So we're going to work one, two, three, four. Oops, show that again. One, two, three, four. All the way to row one. It's one, two, three, and four. I'm just going to pull up a loop for a second to get it out of my way. So this is one section of short rows complete. I'm going to remove these stitch markers. and then zoom out a tad. So this is one section repeat in our pattern. This is at the crown, and then this is the bottom part of the band of our hat. And there's our garter stitch section. I'm gonna get you started on the next section, just to show how to work into that first row after the row 10. 
or after we've worked into the unworked stitches because some people have questions with that. And then I'll let you go and you can finish up your hat and then I'll show you the seam. I can remove the stitch marker that was in our first row. I'm going to move it. So now we're on row 11. And we're going to chain one. And we need to work into the front loop only. Here's our turning chain. Here's our first stitch. So we're going to work in the front loop only of the next 16 stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. And then back loop only slip stitch in each of the next three. Now, since this is the first row of a new section, I'm going to place my stitch marker in the front loop only of that first stitch of the row. Now, the reason for doing this is when we complete the section, so when we work that row 10, I knew where I needed to end. This next section doesn't need to end at row 1. It needs to end at the first row in the new section. So this placing a stitch marker in the front loop only of the first row of a new section can be really helpful. Again, it's not row one, this is actually row 11. Okay, so then to begin the next row, place a stitch marker in that last stitch, the front loop only of the last stitch, and then chain one in turn. And then rows 12 to 19 repeat rows 2 through 9. So row 2 is just a back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across to the last stitch. And we're going to skip that last stitch to have a short row. And then we skip that last stitch. That one already has a stitch marker in it. But from here on out, in the even number rows, make sure you place your stitch markers. So then chain one and turn to begin row th a row three repeat. And with each row, you're going to get shorter just like we did in the previous section. And then when you get to that final row, so it'll be row 20 for this one, kind of like row 10, you'll finish up that section of short rows. Go ahead and complete through row 19 and I'll meet you back here to do row 20 so we can see that one more time before we work our seam. Here's my hat through row 19. I'm going to complete row 20 on camera just to show you how we did the short rows again or worked into the unworked stitches. I'm going to chain one and turn to begin row 20. Work a back loop only slip stitch in each stitch across the previous row.
and then we're going to work a back loop only slip stitch in each unworked stitch to row 11. If you can see your stitch or see the stitches without the stitch markers being there, feel free to take them out so you don't have to work around them. And there we finished up our second section of short rows. Remove the stitch marker so you can see what it looks like. Now you'll see, I'm going to leave that one there right there for a second. You'll see that row one is right here and then here's row was row 11. So they're not that far away. So each section creates a pie shape. It makes it narrower at the crown. That's what removes the bulk of your hat. So you get a nice fitted hat like you do in knitting. So go ahead and complete the rest of your sections. For the baby, it has one more section of, it has rows 21 through 30. And then the last section is row 31 to 39 and which would be row 40 is going to be your seaming row. So I'm going to go ahead and complete mine up through row 39 and then I'll meet you back on camera and I'll show you how to do the seam. Okay, now that we've completed through row 39 of the baby hat, we are ready to work row 40, which is our seam. And in row 40, we not only seam the first and last row of the hat, but we finish up that last section of short rows in the process. So for the seam, you want to have the wrong side facing. So we're going to bring row one, this is row one, up to meet the last row that you just worked. And that will make your wrong side on the outside. So wrong side is going to be facing out for the seam. Then your working yarn needs to go inside your hat. It'll come out the hole in the crown for now. Now for your seam, let's look at the first and the last row that you worked. Here are the stitches from your first row. You have your loops. This is your back loop only and your front loop only. This one's closest to you, so it's front loop. This one's furthest, that's back loop. And then here are the stitches from the last row that you worked. And here are here's your back loop only, which was what we're going to be working into for the seam. Now, you're going to always be working into the back loop only of the last row that you worked. So the first stitches are all going to be worked in the back loop. But when you're working into the first row, you're only going to work into the back loop for the first three stitches. And then the remainder are all going to be worked into the front loop only. But we'll see that one by one. So I'm going to put my, pick my hook back up. Make sure my working yarn is in the inside of my hat. And now, first you start by inserting your hook from front to back into the back loop only of the first stitch. Then insert your hook from back to front into the back loop only of the stitch from row one. <coughs> back to front. And your hook should be pointing down towards the inside of your hat. And you're working yarn, yarn over, pull the yarn through that back loop this back loop and through the loop on your hook to complete one slip stitch. Let's do that again. Insert your hook into the back loop only of the next stitch from the row closest to you, which is your last row you worked. Then insert your hook from back to front 
There's that back loop only. We're going to work from back to front. We're going to yarn over, pull it through that back loop, that back loop, and through the loop on your hook. And then we have one more worked in both back loops. Insert your hook from front to back through the back loop only of the next stitch in the, first, the last row. Then we're going to insert our hook from back to front into the back loop only of that next stitch. And then yarn over, pull through that back loop, that back loop, and through the loop on your hook. Kind of neat how our seam blends in. Now for the remainder portion of the hat, this is the garter stitch portion. We're going to keep working into the back loop only of this row that's closest to you, this last row that you worked. But now we're going to work into the front loops of the stitches from the first row that you worked. So I marked this. This is a front loop only. So insert your hook from front to back into the back loop only of the next stitch from the last row that you worked. Then insert your hook from back to front. I know it's a little awkward. I like to use the hook end to grab that loop if needed. But insert your hook into the front loop only from back to front. Again, heading, um, positioning your hook so that it's pointing towards the inside of your hat. Then yarn over, pull through that front loop, pull through the back loop, and then pull through the loop on your hook. Let's work that a few more times. Insert your hook from front to back into the back loop only of the next stitch in the row closest to you. Insert your hook from back to front through the front loop only of the next stitch of the row furthest from you, which is right here. So you're basically going down the center of that slip stitch for your foundation chain. And now you've got your working yarn here inside. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Okay, again, insert your hook from front to back into the back loop only of the next stitch of the last row you worked. Insert your hook from back to front into the front loop only of the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up the loop and pull through all three loops on your hook. Again, front to back in the back loop only, then back to front in the front loop only. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Insert your hook from back to front or front to back into the back loop only. Then back to front, into the front loop only. Yarn over, pull up the loop, and I'll pull through all three loops on your hook. Okay, so front to back, in the back loop only in the next stitch. Back to front, into the front loop only of the next stitch of the first row. Yarn over. Pull through all three loops on your hook. Front to back into the back loop only of the first row, the front row. Back to front into the front loop only of the next stitch on the back row. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. The seam is a little finicky at first, but once you do it a couple times it gets a lot easier, I promise. 
So you continue working this slip stitch st seam across. Working in the back loops of the row closest to you and the front loops of the row furthest from you, but make sure you insert your hook from back to front into those front loops. That's what keeps us with the garter stitch in the front, otherwise your seam would be much more noticeable. Now here's the last stitch of the row 39 that I worked, but now we're going to work into our unwork stitches. We're going to work into the back loop only of the unworked stitches of our last section of short rows and then these remaining stitches from the first row. We're going to insert a hook from front to back into the back loop only of the next unworked stitch and then back to front into the front loop only of the next stitch from the first row. There's the first unworked stitch worked into. Now we have the next unworked stitch right here. Insert our hook from front to back into that back loop only. Insert our hook from back to front into the front loop only of that next stitch on the first row. Yarn over. Pull your yarn through all three loops on your hook. Again, another unworked stitch. We have two left. So front to back in that back loop and then back to front in the front loop. And one final stitch. And then pass it off your yarn. Turn it right side out. Well, here's the, I'm going to look at it first. Here's your seam that you worked from the inside. Flip your hat right side out. You can remove these stitch markers that were holding our unworked stitches for the last section of short rows. And then here's our seam from the outside. Now it's a little different because it's closer to the first and last row. It's closer together than the other rows that we worked. But it still keeps it in with the garter stitch. So it still blends pretty good. Now after you've completed your seam, weave in your tail of yarn at the bottom and then I take a length of yarn and weave it in and out every stitch in the crown. Just so I have something to tighten up and so closed. You will have a little gap in your crown when you do a short row hat. So just weave it in and out of every row and then pull and it tightens it right up. And then you can pull your yarn to the inside of your hat and fasten it off. I usually like to knot it and then fasten off 
and then weave in ends. And then your hat is complete. I hope you enjoy learning the knit look garter stitch and a short row technique. It is my absolute favorite way to make hats. If you need to adjust your hat, if your gauge is off, let's talk about that for a second. If your gauge is your um, stitch width so the length of your rows is too short, you can easily add any number of chains to this hat. If you add extra stitches, I would suggest adding them to the center portion of the body of your hat. So leave your band the same and just add more front loop only slip stitches in your odd numbered rows. Now if your hat isn't big enough in diameter, you can easily add more rows. You can add a whole nother section you could even add a half a section. So for this baby hat, um, each section was 10 rows. I could add four or six, it'd have to be an even number, but you can add rows in multiples of two. So if you had to add two extra rows, add two extra rows, any number, and then you same, still use that same short row technique to finish off even just those two rows. When you, one thing to keep in mind is when you are adjusting the length of your hat, the length that you chain needs to be about a half to three quarter inches longer than you actually need. So if you need your hat length to be eight and a half inches, your first row should be about nine and a quarter inches because as you work these short rows, the short row wraps up and around to the crown. So it decreases the overall length of your hat just a little bit. So keep that in mind when you're working. Now, if you liked the knit look garter stitch, I also created a scarf and you can find that pattern for free on my blog as well. And there is a video tutorial for this too. I hope that you've really enjoyed this technique and you'll follow along and subscribe for more great short row patterns in the future. Thanks for watching and have a great day.